Now I want to get in the B-roll. And so it's going to be the same scene lined up in the same place. We're just going to change camera angle. And so just so that um, you don't take forever having to watch me find the place, I know that around 58 seconds is going to get me close to the point where I want to. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull my playhead over there. But then I'm going to go back to my project window. And B-roll bud one is the one I want to bring in. So I'm going to double click on that icon to open it over here. Now I've already got my endpoint set. Uh, so I don't need to establish the endpoint. And then I'll establish the outpoint once it's in the timeline. But if I click and play this, So, a couple of things. Um, the sound is really low. That's because the sound came from the iPhone we were using to shoot the B-roll. And so we're not going to use that audio. We're going to use the audio from the A-roll that we captured from this little mic right here. But the audio will help us line up the clips. So if I pull to the beginning of this, and let me increase the volume a bit here. And uh, she... So you can see that where he starts, there's like a, a gap where he's taking a breath and he says, and uh. And so that's what we're looking for over here in the timeline of the A clip. So let's just play this. And I, I mentioned to her that I really didn't want to get serious. I was still going to school and uh... Okay, so there you go space and uh. So I'm going to zoom in right where my playhead is now and I can visually see okay. that that gap. So right here. And, uh, and so I'm going to position okay. my playhead right there because that is where I want to insert the B-roll. And so probably not going to be perfect, but we can adjust once we get it in there. Yes, dear. So I'm going to pull this in. Now I could just pull this in from the window and it will bring in both the video and the audio clips. Um, now I could do that and then just delete the audio clip by holding the option key and clicking on it and then hitting the delete key. But this is a nicer way to do it. So underneath the picture, here's a little video icon and a little audio icon. And so I can drag that video icon into the timeline and that will pull in just the video part of the clip. So that's very nice. Very good. Okay, so let me um, reduce the size of this so it fits. And let's play this and see how close, close I got. And she... So not bad. If you decide you want to adjust this, uh, let me show you a trick. I'm going to zoom way in. And it's really hard to drag this in specific little increments. It, it tends to be kind of herky-jerky if you just move the clip. But if I position the playhead, then I can pull the clip right to it. So what I like to do is just, it kind of snaps right to the end of the clip. And say I want it to start just a tiny bit earlier. I can hit the left arrow key and that will move it over one frame. So you can tell I'm zoomed in a lot. Yeah. But then I pull this and it just snaps right to it. So that way I can move it in very yeah. tiny, precise increments. So let's see how it looks now. School and uh, she warned all her group. So that's pretty good. So I might play a little bit longer just to make sure I got it right on. Um, but you're gonna end up doing that a lot um, if you have different shots that intercut with the primary camera angle. Okay, so you look at the, uh, the timeline now. You're probably wondering, well, well, why is it just sitting on top of it? I thought I had to splice it in. I don't know. Well, we could have spliced this in, but if you don't have to, then don't. And this is a case where we didn't have to. So tracks are like layers in Photoshop, where if it's sitting, you know, this track is on top, top of this track, so if I have both tracks, it's only going to show the top one because this is literally covering up the A roll underneath. And so as we do this, I was still going to school. So and, the A uh, clip is still there. It's just that the B clip is on top of it and hiding it. And I only have one audio track, so there's no competition between the audios from the two clips. Okay, one more thing in this video. I'd like to show you how to get in another type of clip, which is a still image. And so I'm gonna just go back to the beginning here. I'm gonna hit the home key. And then I'm gonna come over to my project window and open up the still images folder. 
and inside of that is Bud Helicopter. At the beginning of this, Bud mentions he was in the military, so let me just play this. Shortly after I got out of the military service... So right there, I just want to insert a quick photo of Bud when he was in the military. He worked on helicopters. And so right over here, I'm going to double click on this icon. That gives me the preview of this still image. And you'll notice when I scanned it, I kept the border of the picture in there. But I don't want that to be here. I just want to zoom in on the image itself. So I'll show you how to change that. But for right now, let's just pull this clip into the timeline. So I'm going to click on the icon for Bud Helicopter and just pull this right in to the playhead there and you can see the image. Now when you import a still image, it by default will give you a five second clip, but you can drag this as short or long as you want, the same way we adjusted the video clip. So I'm gonna leave it at five just to uh, save a little time, but know that you have the ability to make this be an hour long if you want to. It's a still image, so you don't have any limitations. The elephant in the room here is that this doesn't look too great. The blades are getting cut off, and uh, it's a little high up into Bud's head there. So I want to fix those two things. Now I'm going to click on the clip right here in the timeline and then go up to the source window and choose the uh, tab next to that, which is called Effect Controls. Now your motion folder may or may not be twirled open, but you can twirl it open by clicking on the arrows. And what you want to see here are scale and position. So those are the two things I want to change in this image. So it needs to be a little bit bigger, first of all. Now remember, it's never a good idea to enlarge things in any of the programs we use unless you know that you have lots and lots of extra pixels. Well, we don't. This is the right resolution at the right size. So if I enlarge this, in essence, I'm reducing the resolution. Now, video can be a little more forgiving than other medium we've worked with. And this is an old kind of grainy picture, which is going to camouflage um, any anomalies anyway, at least for a while. So I can get away with enlarging this just a little bit. I probably would never go more than 10 or 20 percent because you're going to start seeing the quality degrade. But this won't need that much. So I'm going to hover over the, where it says scale here, hover over the 100 and click and hold and then just drag. And that's called scrubbing again and you will see that eventually it will start to enlarge the image. So I'm going to make it just to the point where I don't see any white gaps between the helicopter blade and the image. Uh, now I've really cut into Bud's head here, so I want um, him to move down a little bit. So for position, this will move you horizontally left and right. This will move you vertically up and down. So I'm going to click and hold over that 540 and just pull to the right, and that will start to pull the image down. So I'm just going to crop it the same place it was cropped in the photo. And so that's how you can adjust the size and the position of the image. And in another movie, I will show you how to actually animate that occurring. I just want to show you one more thing, and I want to talk about uh, the idea of clipping. So we talked in class, but let me reinforce it here. So what we've done here, on first the B-roll over here, I was still going to school at is that's just a straight cut. That's a quick cut. So there's no transition between one clip and the other. And most filmmakers that I know, maybe all of them that I've ever met and talked to about this, always say they don't want transitions at all. It's a quick cut <laughs> and nothing else. I don't believe quite that strongly, but most of the time that is going to be true. That if you go from one, one cut, you go from one angle to another angle, a quick cut is almost always going to be the best way to continue the story without interruption. And remember, that's what you're doing. You don't want to add things to your film that is going to distract the viewer from absorbing your storyline, whatever that is.
Now, I find the exception to be when you do cut to something else that is at a different time and or place, then you can give the viewer a little bit of a visual clue that it's a, that it's a change like that. Now, with transitions, you need to keep even anything other than a straight cut really simple. And I told you guys in class, and I'm going to tell you here, if I see any three-dimensional effects, things flying and spinning and tumbling or sliding off the screen, um, your grade will be affected because that is totally distracting totally to what you're trying to sure. say. Now, you may have a specific reason for certain type of transitions. If you can justify it, then that's fine. There's always times to break the rules. But 99 times out of 100, those types of transitions are going to do nothing but look kind of amateurish and sloppy. And so the type of transitions <laughs> I would recommend if you do them are simple dissolves. And so I'm going to zoom in here on the photo clip. And you'll see the straight cut here is fine. But I find it a little abrupt because he's telling a story and that abrupt cut actually gets my attention um, and I'd rather not have my attention drawn to the, to the cut like that. And so if you go back to the project window, um, there's a tab on the top. If you can't see it, drop the menu here, but it's called effects. So I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to pull down to video transitions. I'm going to spin that open and then the second one down is dissolve. So I'm going to spin that one open. And typically the dissolve I use is cross dissolve, but you know, play with these and choose the one that you like the best. And uh, so I'm just going to pull in this icon and put it over the left side of that clip. And that's all there is to it. It's that simple to add a transition. And you can adjust the timing of this and all that. Um, it isn't hard. I'm going to click and pull in one to the end. And now you have a transition in and out of the clip. And so now if I play this military service, uh, I, I was kind of at a loss because all my friends had... So to me that works a little bit better. It's softer. It doesn't interrupt the story. It just kind of gives more content to the story. Uh, but that is subjective. You get to choose. But I will repeat, don't do any of those stupid flying, tumbling things. And uh, I'm going to say that's it for this film. Uh, the next film, we will talk about how to add audio, do a splice cut, and even a little bit of animation. So uh, I'll see you then.